It's that pain relief Long time I've been searching for some remedies Never thought I'd find a cure in all these melodies I never thought I'd put my people in the cemeteries I've looked my brethren <laughs> Yes, welcome to my well London's craziest gangster With me, Mr Fish Later on liaison with real London's gangsters Mr Lee And today Today, trust me, we have a man who said he can, who's done it all, seen it all, been it all, and heard it all, and left it all behind to be here with us. Today, ladies and gentlemen, my guest, controversial, I won't say anything else, Mr. Sean Atwood. Yeah! What's the J? How are you getting? Bouncy! Bouncy! We meet again! We meet again! Trust me! Trust me! We said it was gay! We said it was gay! He never thought we'd get here! Mr. Leon is on the way! Here we go! How are you? Brilliant, man! Right! Let's start with you now. Yeah. You're big in the game. You've controversial, I said. But I need to know now. It's me and you. Let's get this show. Go now. for it. Bang. Yeah. Where's your younger days? Where was your younger days? Start with your schooling, secondary, university. Bring it in. All right. So I grew up in Witness, chemical manufacturing town. Didn't have much money, but I got interested in the stock market as a kid. While I'm doing my studies, my best friend, Wild Man, he grows really big. Grabs a teacher, grabs a school teacher, and puts him in the rubbish bin. So they put him outside because they're so scared of him. So you got this, it's like a tale of two people, really. Okay. I'm the brain, I'm the nerd, and he just gets really big and he's got red dots in his head from, you know from being a teenager telling him to hurt people. And one thing I love about you yeah. is he's really honest, and he's, as you said, he just called himself a nerd. <laughs> he's absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, right. I am, an, I am a nerd who got gangster right. Uh, I'm on, not a gangster. Hold on, so here we go. Never right. been a gangster. So let me, and I'm not, I'm not a gangster. I've been a prankster, but I'm a gangster. But here we go, yeah. So, let me ask. So, you got into the stock market, stocks and shares, yeah. selling sweets at school, I heard. So. Yeah, yeah, running to the shop, getting the purple drops, the bonbons, the doubling. How were you at this time? Um, stock market started when I was about 14. I started investing oh, when I was 16. I was thinking, hey, now kids to sweets. That's a scandal. Whoever's getting you angry, he's only 14. I was not even got blamed for that one. <laughs> but, so crack on. So you're doing stock market, stocks and shares. And yeah, stuff. yeah. So I do my A-levels, do my uni. Well, who bought the sweets? When I was a kid. Yeah. We just, with my dinner money. Yeah, go on. I'd run to the shops with my dinner money. Yeah. Get the purr drops, get the bonbons, sell them for twice the price. Get some dinner coupons off the kids to get my lunch with, and then I had money over. Business studies degree at Liverpool Uni. Yeah, really? What did you put? What two point one? Two point one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go yeah, on, yeah. gee, people be on that. <laughs> people be on that. Know me about degrees. I've been to Spain loads of times. Um, crash out your farm. We're on us. Crash out your farm. So, was you working when you left university? <laughs> I went to Glastonbury and watched Guru Josh and Adamski. I took some acid and I couldn't find my car. Oh, mate, wait, wait. Did you have trails and all that? Skibbity dibbity bibbity rips, they used to call it. Wait, did you have. California Sunrise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. California Hotel. California Sunshine. <laughs> so it's a mate. Crash, yeah? yeah so yeah. you go to university, did you get a job? You... So what I did was. I got aunts in Arizona, and they used to invite me you over. You got what in Arizona? Aunts and uncles in Arizona. Oh, right. So when I was 16, in Arizona, my aunt changed my date of birth in my passport. No. So I was 21, took me out nightclubbing, and was introduced to me to all these beautiful American women as Paul McCartney's nephew. No. So I'm just, you know, a little nobody from Witness. And all of a sudden, yeah, changed. All the... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you changed. Yeah, changed. You've been following me. All of a sudden, <laughs> I'm Paul McCartney's nephew, and these beautiful American women are rolling out the red carpet, and I'm thinking, 
I want some of this when I finish right. university, so that's what I did. Really? In the meantime, Wildman went to prison. Okay, why did he go to prison? He'd been told that someone had some ecstasy, so he knocked the guy out. He's like a left fist guy. And um, the guy didn't have ecstasy, but I think five pounds dropped out of his pocket. And he picked... <laughs> he five picked, pounds! He picked, five pounds! He picked the five pounds up and went and bought a kebab with it. No. And that was street robbery. <laughs> no, you're joking. Serious? <laughs> was the kebab any good? <laughs> <laughs> was it worth it? <laughs> okay, so just before we start about your criminal life and all yeah. that, let's bring in the man who says he can. My good man from real London, the gangsters, Mr. Lee Elliott. Yeah! Oh my god! We've got no guns. Not today, uh, anyway. We've got no guns, we've got loads of money. And the dog's called Kilo, lovely dog, we thought we'd be a dog. We're trying to make it a family friendly affair. <laughs> family. Okay, look here, he's murder. He loves me. I had to confess yesterday that I slept with my girlfriend's brother. <laughs> now it looks like I could sleep with the dog. <laughs> Okay, Sean. Yeah. How are you? Man, I've got fish everywhere. I've got fish next yeah. to me. Oh my I've got fish God. here. God. I've got fish in my waistcoat. I've got fish in my trousers. We're going to be lovers. We're going to be lovers. Sean. How are you? What are you being? Like I said earlier, the funnest day of the year was meeting you guys. <laughs> really? And with, this, with this on my calendar, I've just been buzzing, man. I've been buzzing, honestly. <laughs> The funniest of day of the year was for you because it was my worst day. Man. In actual fact, that podcast with him was an absolute nightmare. Oh man, oh, I've never been anywhere. And you, well, what he done for me, I don't know. Well, okay. People have to know the real you fish, don't they? That's what, scares, that's what scares me. So here we go, enjoy the show. So, hey, you've come down today. It's cost me £5,000 to get the studio, the backdrop stuck on the wall. <laughs> yeah, you look like Stan, um, Stan, you look like Stan, you look like Stan, you look like Stan, mate, don't become a gangster, whatever you do, do not become a gangster. You look like Lauren, come on, hello Stan. My head's too big. I know it is, which one are you talking about, you're disgusting, Keep it. it's a family show. <laughs> so, Sean, you know, we, 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 we we, 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 got, we got into podcasting because of you, Marvin Herbert, Bobby Kasanga, and all the rest. And, yeah. uh, and you know, we had such a laugh, such a great laugh. And so I brought you back on the show. Appreciate um, it. Controversial figure, but that is what we love. I think if you're not controversial, then you're not living. <laughs> you're not left being on the podcast. <laughs> you're not living. What's, what, what's that what for, Sean? What, what is this for? I've no idea. It was on the table. Don't start incriminating me. I beep beep. Don't start incriminating me. Listen, I don't know what it's for. I, I mean, what, what is it? I mean, uh, have you come? Kiss a cigar. Hello? Oh, uh, 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 is that Simpsons and Fast Beer, right? Can you tell me which time the next bus is, please? Why, why, why do you, uh, that's a phone, wicked. Really? It's a pink piece of plastic. And what does it do, Sean? Yeah. No idea. What does it do, no Sean? idea. <laughs> Clean your ears, Sean. <laughs> anyway, let's get it on. Crash out your farm. I think it's ringing, it's vibrating. <laughs> <laughs> See what I've got part with him. So, where did the criminality begin? Where, where, where did the drug, was it drugs before criminality or criminality before drugs? I was participating in the rave scene, taking drugs, but I wasn't. Yeah, so drugs came before criminality. Yeah, yeah. Why? Five years, I'm straight in the stock market in America. And then Wildman gets out of prison and I bring him over. Right. And I have this idealistic notion that I can get him a job as a wrestler. 
Okay. Can I ask you, how did you and Wild Man meet in the beginning? All right, so, Wild Man's oldest brother was the head of our little gang called Sweats. Right, the Sweats. The Sweats. What do you We're Sweats. We're running away. The Sweats. <laughs> the Sweats. <laughs> We've watched. And you've got a better name than the Sweats. We've watched the Wanderers and the Warriors. Oh, well, okay, the yeah, I remember the Warriors. So it wasn't like a gang, gang. It was just little kids. <laughs> Wild Man is two years younger than me. Yeah. His brother was the leader of the gang, and he wouldn't let Wild Man join the gang. No. Why? He beat the shit out of him and fucking was really cruel to it to him. So I splintered off from the Sweats. Me and Wild Man and Hammy. Started our own little clique. And we, no. And Wild Man, Hammy is Wild Man's cousin. He, he's going to come into the yeah. story as well. Well, Yammy B. Hammy. Oh, Hammy. Yeah. Sounds like Yammy. And what did you call your clique then? The Drips. <laughs> <laughs> Sweaty Drips. Sweaty Drips. <laughs> so we didn't have a name. Okay, so yeah, yeah. What, was, what, what was the next? So, so you met him, and then what was your next? Uh... So when we were kids, when we were t I was a teenager. Yeah. There's a quarry at the top of my town. A quarry? Yeah, near an area called Pex Hill. We've got a black of flats and he's got a quarry. <laughs> <laughs> Northerners, mate. It's a lot. So, there's a tree that overlooks the quarry, and we would get through the fence, get on this tree, and we would say what our life plans were. And we call this tree the thinking tree. Oh, the tree? Yeah, we called it the thinking tree. The thinking tree. Okay. Yeah. Now, it was Wildman's funeral just before Christmas, and I didn't know how it had been organised. And the, the thinking tree. And the vehicle, the, the funeral procession, detoured and went by Pex Hill in honour of the thinking tree. In honour of the thinking tree. In honour of the thinking and tree. And what was your life expectancies going to be? So what, what we said was, Wildman said, I've got red dots in my head telling me to hurt people, I'm going to spend the rest of my life in prison. And I said, dots in your head means the arm don't bear on you, you lunatic. <laughs> Not you have to die in prison. He's going to spend the rest of his life in prison, that's what he thought. Yeah. yeah. And um, Hammy, Hammy. Great expectations. Yeah, yeah, that's why I want to get him Joe as a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, get him beaten up as well. Parker, I wish I had a friend like that. Get me slowed about and smashed into the ring. Oh, great. Because he was just, he was only a teenager. And he was going down and fighting all the bouncer crews on the He's doors. He was just, he was just mental. Witness rugby team. With yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, you're all nutters, yeah, you eat yeah, bricks for yeah. breakfast, <laughs> you smash your head on the wall for fun. You are yeah, he did, he did. Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> Always put his head through walls yeah, and stuff. So, Hammy's like, I'm like, okay, right, I'm going to go to America, mil make a million and fly you guys over. And Hammy's like, yeah, with all that shirt raising you're doing, you probably will. And that's what happened. Really? Yeah. Wicked. So the thinking tree did actually pay off? Fucking thing to treat work, man. Can I get a treat? Is that what you went to uni for to learn how to do stocks and shares, yeah? So, my That's economics my think. economics teacher, Mr. Dillon, had showed me some of it in school. Okay. And then A levels I did maths, physics, economics. So I've always got the economics and the maths. And then business studies, again, yeah, you know, so you can analyse business and corporations and things like that. Hmm. I was always that was my aim in the stock market right. through that, yeah. At least, you, at least you had a direction, right? Yeah, yeah, I was very direct. I'm like the Chinese, I've got like a ten year plan always. <coughs> what about your parents? I'll be a make a million by the time I'm 30. What did your parents do, if you don't mind me asking? Alright, so my dad was a door-to-door -door insurance salesman and my mum was a housewife and then later on she got a degree herself. Okay. And she in, in. She taught in English and she taught people with special needs. Oh, yeah, lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. She had a result with you <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, so carry on. Like, well, blessed, blessed to have such good parents. I had my back when I got ready. So, 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 what? I'm blessed to have such good parents who yeah. supported me and stood by me when I got arrested. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, good, yeah, yeah. I thought you just turned your back. I was just saying, no, I'm done. Right. No, no, yeah. I'm happy. happy. Yeah, good, brilliant. Okay, so let's let's go to uh, your first arrest, like, like, um, when was your first arrested, Sean? Yeah, May 16th, 2000. Crazy, how's your father? May 16th, 2002 was when the SWAT team came on the whole XC ring. <laughs> stop, stop. Let's go. Go, let's go around. <laughs> Lee, my first arrest was for the, in a bicycle. <laughs> and having at, at, hands. At, at, yeah, yeah, hold on, my hands. What was yours? Uh, Nick in a car. Yeah? Yeah. 
What was yours again, mate? Possession of a sex toy when I was... <laughs> <laughs> SWAT team came May 16th, 2002. A SWAT team? Yeah, a SWAT team. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you when a SWAT team? 33. Well, oh, you didn't do your first crime until 33? They've been cheated. It was a multi-agency investigation and they've followed tracking me for like five or six years. Five or six years? And now this years, was your years. first arrest song, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, they're going to be that fucking good. <laughs> I, I know, I was moving around all the time. Yeah. Why was you moving? The prosecutor said I had so many aliases they couldn't even put an all on my grand really? indictment. They, where, didn't, they didn't know who it was. Where were you moving? Where were you moving? Man, oh. when I had, I had money in the stock market. Yeah, I had God. houses and apartments, and I was flying people from the UK, putting houses and apartments in the name, cars <laughs> in the name. When Hammy arrived, yeah. I had a limo pick him up at the airport, took him straight to the car dealership. And him signed for a car that we were doing all this drug trafficking yeah, in. I was still a stockbroker at this point, right? So I said, help yourself to whatever's in the safe. I've got to go work. Him and his drinking partner he brought over opened the safe and it was full of like crystal meth and ecstasy. Mm -hmm. Now, because they were from England, they I thought you, crash, eat, you, yeah. eat, you eat a gram of speed. Oh. I didn't tell them. <laughs> I didn't tell them. By the time I got home, the fucking eyes were out here. No. They've been eating grams of crystal meth. The trash can was full of Budweiser's, <laughs> and they were like freaking the fuck out. So I'm like, right, no. <laughs> I've got, I've got, you know, I'm not some striptease women out in LA. Let's drive out to LA. They'll chill you guys out. So I'm driving out to LA, and after doing the makeup thing, <laughs> being, put, Sean, we're being followed, we're being followed. <laughs> no, not be full, guys. You're just wigging out because you've done Paranoia. too much. Oh, yeah, yeah. Park out. All the way to, we get to Palm, what's it, Palm Springs, and pull over for the McDonald's, trying to chill them out. Like, no, cars are passing us, and even when you're slowing down, the cars are like falling yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that, yeah. they were like that all the way to LA. That trip lasted three days because no. one of them wigged out, ran off down Sunset Boulevard, yeah, threw all his yeah, money yeah. at me and his luggage at me. Saying, I know you've flown me to it out here for a drug deal. <laughs> no, my my, fingerprints, no, my yeah. fingerprints are on this money. Threw it at me. F fled down Sunset Boulevard like a like a wolf on acid. And I never saw him again. No. Yeah. <laughs> what happened with you when you first took drugs? Uh, I was raving in my late teens, summer of love, all that shit, late night, late eighties. I've been about fourteen. No, no, like high teens. Yeah. University. So, okay, that's yeah. when you started, you know, yeah. 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 Right, yeah. Are you yeah. talking about sunrise, back to the future, energy, all those raves? Did you just go to them? Yeah, Carl Cox, Sashi with yeah. big headlines right. and everything yeah, back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Damsky, Guru, <laughs> Josh. Yeah, I used to do the adverts uh, for me. Uh, um, Randall, DJ Rand, DJ Rap, DJ Kenny Ken. Yeah. And our club was called Laser Driving Peckham and I'm mate. Off and nuts. On it. Fabio but, um, and Groove Rider. Ken Nelson yeah, Groove, the fridge. I did his uh, advert on Kiss. Groove Rider, <laughs> the hardcore provider. On Kiss, 100%. Bang. Can you do M Vita? Manchester vibes in the area. Who? M Vita! What are you saying? There used to be this DJ who got up and go, Manchester vibes in the area. M Vita. And what was the best club you went to in Manchester? I've never been to Oh man, the Thunderdome. The Thunderdome, yeah? Yeah, Hacienda was a bit touristy, but Thunderdome, Oldham Road, dodgy as fuck, salted really? fucking skinheads, <laughs> paddling the ecstasy. Is it like a warehouse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'd have ended up with a girlfriend out of Salford through that. Did you? The Salford skins would just chase me back to my car. Right, oh, because you saw a different area. Yeah, with this. Because if I went Manchester, I was a scouser. Yeah. If I went to Liverpool, I was a woolly back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah right near the Georgian Dragon British pub in Central Phoenix. Right. Thinking he'll just have a Guinness with the expats and he won't get in any trouble. Okay. <laughs> Within weeks, me and my bird go to visit him one night and a bunch of Mexicans answer the door. I'm like, where's Peter? Because that's his name, Peter. Okay. No, Peter, yeah. Yeah, there is. We, I, I bought, I, I rent this place for him. Where's Peter? No, we didn't. I buy a pizza. What are you talking about? Peter, Peter, he lives here. 
They all pull guns out. Nah, me and my missus are like, Crash, me and your father. <laughs> Go on, Sam. Me and my missus are like, oh fuck. So we're backpedaling across the road. A wild man just bounces over the road, happy as fuck, laughing. I said, Peter, you just almost got a shot. He goes, oh, stop tripping. He goes, they're local crap dealers. They like to move around a lot. <laughs> they like to move around a lot. So I'm in their place over the street right now. And they're, they're giving me as much crack as, as I can take for free because they're buzzing because I could do a hundred dollar crack rock in one breath <laughs> and it goes, sizzle, 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 and it calms down my red dots. And he says, the head guy running the Mexicans is from Colombia. This is like Cali Cartel. <laughs> and they want to invest in the stock market with you? And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. Oh, blood. So it wasn't a, quite a criminal yet. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Where did he meet these guys? Do you know? Fuck knows. As soon as he goes anywhere, I put him, all of the local street people, he moves them in. So his apartment has got transgender, street walking, prostitutes, gangbangers, you the, local, the local crack and crystal meth dealers, bikers, everything. It's just non-stop, 24-7, in and out. And that's how he relaxes when there's complete chaos around him, he would, right. he would relax. Yeah. That's what he was like. And what did complete opposite of me, I had social anxiety. What did your parents think? Do you know, like, well, when you was getting into the race scene, doing the drugs and that, did they know anything about what was going All on? All right, so in my town, people are very insular and wouldn't leave. But me and Wildman were adventurous, so we'd go off to you know, the state and the Quadrant Park and talk stuff, yeah. or Manchester, and we would go to these parties. And that's how we really bonded. We had my, my mum's little red uh, Talbot Horizon. I just passed my driver's licence test. And we'd just go around the country, me and, me and Peter, to these raves. He became like my rave partner, <laughs> and um, until the, until the end, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, just just to set the table a bit. Yeah. Wild Man is a formidable character. When he died, he was six foot two, twenty eight and a half stone, and he would always say, you know, my fist to your fist, and he put his fist next to mine. It was twice the size, and just all human teeth marks all the way along them. In Arizona, he put working for the Hell's Angels, for the um, New Mexican Mafia for the cartel down in Mexico, when he was on the run in Mexico, they called him El Oso the Burr because of his fighting style. <laughs> yeah, so people in the UK may not have heard of him, but in America he would, had made his name. Yeah. So I loved him to death and wanted to get him a job as a wrestler, rents his place out to the um, Colombian and the Mexican crap dealers. Within a couple of months, I get a call at the office, he's fucking, there's been a, there's a corpse on the doorstep of that house, it's headline news, this is my yeah. end now. You need to get up there, Peter might be dead. I shoot up there in my car, I've got drugs on me, I see all the, the yellow tape and the cops and the media, I'm like, fuck this, I get back to work, but it's going through my head. So I wait until later in the day, go back, open the door, and Peter's in there, I'm like, fucking hell, thank God he's still alive. And there's a very, there's a very sober-faced homicide detective talking to him on the sofa, and he wants to talk to me too. Yeah. And the homicide detective, they've drawn the gunpowder residue and all that shit, so that it wasn't Peter who killed this guy. It was ruled a shooting accident. Couple come over to buy crack. No. The dealers had moved over the road. The girl goes over the road to get the crack. The guy has got a gun, wild man's never seen a gun before, he says, show me your gun, the guy's showing his gun, he says, look, we don't fuck around in America, it's got the safety on his, I use, used it, and he blew his head off. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Kill so that one, how's your father? <laughs> Crash! Yeah. That, wow. one, that one ended up very abruptly, with this corpse on the doorstep, and he had to move out. So then, um, some people who, had, through the drug community that he knew, he moved into a flat on the west side with them, there was two women, and there was a steroid head bouncer, I looked like a Chippendale, like this blonde, permed her cowboy, I thought he was tough. <laughs> the deposit check had not even cleared before I got a call from the reception saying, you need to come and get Peter, he's been evicted. I said, why has he been evicted? He's beat his roommate up. How do you know he's beat his roommate up? The Chippendale cowboy, tough guy, was seen, she said, running through the apartment complex in the middle of the night, with plasterboard powder all over his head and face, and there's, <laughs> there's human head sized holes in all of the walls. So he shoved his head through the wall, yeah? yeah? Multiple times. No! Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So the two women say, look, I've got, one of them's got a boyfriend in Tempe, Arizona, and this is where the drug enterprise begins now. My boyfriend's behind on the rent. If Sean could fix that, you could move in there. I fix it. It's a three bedroom apartment in a complex called Rancho Marietta, Tempe, Arizona. These are massive apartment complexes with multiple buildings, yeah. Um, Rancho Marietta. Rancho Marietta. <laughs> El Guapo! Quiero la Don't start Don't start that Don't start I'm gonna put a bridge on and put it in a plastic bag. I'm gonna put a bridge on and put a plastic bag on. Alright, so. Yeah, carry on. Um, Rancho Maria apartment yeah. then be just becomes drug den central. He's got this is where I meet through the apartment parties there. I meet Russian mafia, gangbangers, all the all the people of the night, um, Mexican mafia, and this is where I meet G Dog. So Wild Man is my principal bodyguard. Well, you, did he move in with you into this apartment? Like I would let Wild Man know where I live. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so much for friends. <laughs> when he found out my work address, he showed up with a pimp. Dressed, this is the 14th floor, this high rise building, the stockbrokers and stuff. This, this guy's wearing purple from head to toe, top hat, feather in it, fucking cane and everything. And um, they, they show up at the reception. The reception Sean, you need to come up here, Peter's. Um, at reception, you need to come very quickly before the clients see this. So I, I get up there and I'm like, get in the elevator right now. I get in the elevator with him and I'm like, Peter, you just can't come to the office like this. He's like, I need a gun. <laughs> I need a gun. This guy will give me a, a fucking Saturday night special for away for $50. You got $50. Why do you need a gun, Peter? So he was, he was dating a black striptease dancer at this point in time who he'd met at that apartment. She'd showed up with her boyfriend who was a bouncer. And Wild Man's party trick was to either have people punch him in the face as hard as they could, or taser him. <laughs> and he could just giggle like a little kid while he was getting tased. <laughs> Absolutely. So she's this, 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 um, she's, she was a, a black chick, and she was covered in like scars and burns. She was S and M, S and M girl. She comes up to him and she goes, "You a fucking pussy." Tasing yourself. <laughs> I'll fucking out do you. I taser, no. I taser my clips. No. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. So Wild Man goes, well, show me. And she goes, well, my boyfriend's there, we'll get rid of him. So she goes, she tells him. She goes, she, she goes I'll have him go and get me some food, what have you got? And Wild Man's I've got some spaghetti bolognese in the kitchen. She sends him off to make spaghetti bolognese. So I'm like, look, everybody, everybody watch this. She just, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, no, I'll say this. She just squats down, she doesn't have any nickies on. And she's just got this taser. <laughs> and they have little blue bolts, yeah. little blue bolts, yeah. little blue bolts are going up and down a lip no. from the lip. And she's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> she's loving it. I'm like, Wild Man is in love now. Wild Man's in love. He's met his match. Oh, he's met his future wife. Yeah. 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 Well, not quite yet. Left that person behind in the UK. Wild Woman, who's a crazy scouser, and they just fight each other. He told her he was, going, he was going to get a bottle of milk or a newspaper and just jumped on the plane to Arizona. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Alright, so, the, so, wow. so, so, so I'm getting, I'm still working the stock market. Yeah. At this point, I'm getting, I can only get 50 to 100 pills off the local dealers. But I'm just showing off, I'm just giving them away for free because I'm the man, you know, I've got the most money. Egotistic, emotionally immature. But then they're going like that, and I'm thinking, people are coming all night long and saying, have you got 50, have you got 100? Hmm. <laughs> Business opportunity. Yeah. Do I want to just keep working the stock market? Yeah. Don't be in the office at 6 yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Or, or could I start getting a lot of LA, thousands of pills from LA? Yeah. I think I'm going to try that. Oh, as an experiment, get a thousand. So we found out who they were getting them off, and the surfer gangster dude called Sol. You see that movie, Point Break? Yeah, yeah, come on. Two car loads of us go to LA. Yeah. All those guys are dead now. <laughs> this is how crazy my friends were back then. All, yeah, all yeah, my wrist, all my wrist. Yeah, yeah. Blind. Me and Wild Man are in the twin turbo Mazda RX-7. We've got the radar detector on going 150 miles an hour. And in the other car is my friend Seth, this big guy who um, he died a couple of years ago. His heart. And my other friend Acid Joey. 
Native American, best dancer I've ever seen in my life. He was big, but he was completely fluid. He was always on ketamine. Yeah. He should have been in music videos. <laughs> he was found dead in his swimming pool with all of his clothes on. He'd been on drugs. Yeah. So we, we go to Saul's house in West Hollywood, and he's not there. <laughs> well, man's getting mad. It's like when he shows up, I'm just gonna fucking kick his door in. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, well, if we do that, are we gonna have a regular connect if this works out? Yeah, Chill yeah, out. yeah. I said, so, so Saul shows up, proper surfer gangs dudes. I've never seen surfer gangs before. <laughs> point break, flashback to point break. Right, I'm going in, because only I'm allowed in. Yeah. You guys stay out here, if they don't let me out in 20 minutes, kick the door in. I go in, and um, so I've got like, I don't know, ten to fifteen thousand dollars on me. And he goes, have you got the, the, the money? I said, yeah, I've got the money. Look, can I, can I try a pill? He gives me one, he says, you want, a, do you want a drink with that? I said, no, I, I just chew it. I like, I know what the taste of ecstasy is. So I've, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you like that show? I stand Yeah, that. actually, I knew what was coming there. Oh, this is gas. I was going to get off. I liked it, yeah. No. I don't think it's a picture of me um, online with, with my uh, shades and my tongue, and I'm just a chewed pill on my tongue. No. Yeah, yeah. No. I'll send you some photos if you want to add them to this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, 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 I thought I'm gonna get robbed with the cops, but it was all good, it was all good. So I'm driving home. Oh, this is blinding. Twin turbo, yeah. right? I've got the fucking fur on the seat. And about 30, 40 minutes into the drive back home, I just come up on the ecstasy. And we've got, <laughs> we've got DJ Sasha, Renaissance, on the fucking yeah, yeah, sound yeah, system. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, I'm just melting into this fur. No! And then, yeah, and I'm like, oh man. <sighs> This was before we had procedures in place and we yeah. thought about the police. This I was just when I was prepared to go for him. Yeah, we got, we got procedures in place up. later on. So, um, get back to Rancho Maria apartment. Yeah. Those pills are gone in the weekend. Right? <laughs> I'm thinking, this is fucking easy money. Yeah, just yeah. Fuck the stock market. I could just party with, you know, crazy people and beautiful women all night long. <laughs> Have the time of my life. And that was the fatal decision that oh, caused. Brilliant. Yeah. That was fatal. Why? Fatal because of fucking um, all the problems it led to. Oh, mate. Yeah. Crash out your father. Remember where you heard it first. And remember where you saw it last. Keep it coming. Wild man. His first day is short. Ah. His first day is short lived. Yeah. Him and the um, strip tease dancer. Studio. No work. No work and house them anymore. They've yeah. burned through all the hotels. They're going in restaurants and not paying. Yeah. They end up living yeah. under a tree in Tempe Beach Park. <laughs> With a Rambo knife and a baseball bat. That's how they live in the couple. Okay. Bonnie and Clyde, they get busted. He's fucking an illegal alien. It definitely ain't in your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we, couldn't afford, we couldn't afford the studio. He's an illegal alien. Oh, what's that in there? He's going to have to take it down. Take it down. Yeah. Yeah. He's, an, he's an illegal <laughs> alien. So that's Wildman's first deportation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are two more deportations. <laughs> All right, so. We're all shitting ourselves, right? In this yeah. What should we do? Next thing, bang, 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 bang on the French window. <laughs> it's G-Dog, right, we better let him in. He comes in the schools and she says, look, they can't get a warrant that fast, they can't just come in. They don't know where the fuck I've gone. If they knock on the door, turn the lights out, turn the TV off, just don't answer. And we were in there, it was a heavy situation for hours, and they did come, helicopters and everything, and then they, they left. So at the end of that night, I say to G-Dog, I've got a house in Phoenix, come and chill over there. I don't know who he is properly at this point, or who his brothers are. Yeah, yeah. And at the end of all of this situation, because we got him through the cops, he says to me, Sean, my brothers have got you back now because of what you've done for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it took, it took me a couple of months to yeah, go and actually yeah. meet them. Yeah. He said, do, do you want to talk to you and do maybe want to check your ecstasy out? So I thought G Dog was heavy. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. Get to the street in Tempe, Arizona. It's just all low rider showcase cars. Go to the front door. Short guy, know her. He's got like the wife beater vest and he's got the short <laughs> hands here. Um, and he's like looking up at me. And this is his brother. And um, he's like, damn, you know, this mean face. And he hears my accent. He hears my accent. Yeah. And he's like, damn, you talk funny. I guess you really must be from England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come yeah, in yeah. and meet my homies. So I'll go into the living room. I fucking never forget this. <laughs> there are all these massive. Mexican American Chicano gang members looking at me like they want to eat, like they want to eat me. Yeah. Who's this skinny ass fucking English guy, bogged on ecstasy, smiling in our fucking living room? 
And I'm looking around, they've got tables, weighing apparatus, slabs of coke, slabs of crystal meth, fucking arm, arm up to the teeth, AKs, MPs, everything. And um, I'm looking around the room, I've seen the biggest TV I've ever seen in my life. They've got another TV, showing everybody coming and going on the road. No. But then I did a double take, oh, God. Uh, I look at the big TV, oh fucking hell, that's not, an ornament. that's not an ornament. I saw one of them before, oh yeah, it was in the Rambo movie in the fucking 1980s. Rocket propelled grenade launcher on top of the TV. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Gangster, yeah. gangster, yeah. gangster, yeah. gangster. And how did you feel about that? Oh, blind. You said you, you're, you're not a gangster. So G Dog's with me. I'm feeling safe. Okay. A huge one of them. And I find out the nature of him. He, he was a fucking hitman as well, this guy. Right. Yeah, this huge one. This is, I found all this out when they had like this. Is this, is this, is this, <laughs> this huge one puts a big spoonful of coke in my face. It's like snot some of this. <laughs> to make sure you're not old Bill. Yeah, and I'm looking at G Dogs and just fucking see yeah, snot it. Yeah. So I'm snot this fucker. And then the brother takes me in the back room and just has a private chat with me. Okay. What do you say? I've got to be careful because yeah. this isn't these guys are still act active. <laughs> <laughs> I can only he got still active. So are we. <laughs> let's just say, let's just say he was satisfied. He was satisfied. I was, a, I was a good person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we entered into a business relationship yeah. whereby I provided them ecstasy, and he would provide us like hydroponics and stuff like for my friends who wanted to chill out with some hydro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you on. There goes the crash. That just shows you the podcast, the same way the podcast is going downhill. <laughs> Carry on. They say, Sean, if you ever get pulled over leaving here, yeah. when the cops say, can they search your vehicle, you say, you're in a hurry, unless you've got a warrant, I'm in a hurry, you do not have my permission. If they say, fuck that, you're coming with me, they said, here's a lawyer, you call this lawyer, you exercise your right to remain silent. And this was the lawyer I used years later when the shit hits the fan. Okay. This is how this guy does this really Is that the one that I said in your last podcast, you said he got you nine years and I said he wasn't very good and you said, well, he only got me, no, I said he wasn't very good and you said he got me nine years and I said, that's life. <laughs> and you said, I was facing 200. <laughs> 200 years. I got 99. So while Wild Man is, is gone, um, there's a few year period and I go from then just Getting out of LA, got about three suppliers, yeah. including the guy who got deported, DJ Hot Wheels, who I lived with in, in Guildford for 10 years. Kudos to him, man. He helped me when I fucking had nobody when I got out of prison. And then, um, fucking, why am I buying them from LA? These guys are getting them from Holland. I'm paying like eight, nine, they go over 25, 30 in and the clubs. And where did you get your pills for, from at first, when you was first over in America? You was getting them from LA, yeah? You mean personal use? Yeah, yeah. No, just local people. That's a Joey. Oh, really? That's oh, a Joey. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, man, that's a Joey. I remember I, I was at an early uh, rave. I don't remember if it was the Works Club or someplace downtown. And there was a whole circle of people. I'm like, what's going on at the dance floor? And that's a Joey on Ketamin. He's a big guy, but his body was like fluid. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. he would get on the dance floor. And he would dance through all of the dancers and mimic loading up a shotgun and shooting all of the other dancers. <laughs> I'm like, this guy's got to be. This guy's got to be in music videos. He was fucking amazing. So I think this guy's, he obviously knows where to get the good drugs. Yeah. He became my local supplier and then he started to work for me in the organization. Well yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so where do we go through from there? Like, so not... while Wild Man's gone, I'm figuring out how to, you know, business studies knowledge now is being applied. I've got about, at the peak of it, I've got about 200 people working for me. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've tried methods of putting them, strapping into people's bodies, bringing them from Holland, <laughs> mailing them <coughs> stock market reports, glued into stock market reports. By the end of it, we've got people just fucking throwing thousands and thousands in pillowcases. Or oh, if they want to be more secure in, in computer towers. Wild woman was stopped at Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport bringing thousands in vitamin jars in a luggage. They took her in the back room, put them on a table, said to her, what are they? She goes, vitamins. They said, cool, put them back in the luggage and told us to have a nice day. <laughs> no. Really, yeah? yeah? No. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So after that, we thought, after that we thought we'd better consult someone about a, diff a different method. 
So we had a lawyer who advised us on these things, and he said, bring them through Mexico! Yeah. <laughs> you know what I love about it, Sean? You can tell he's definitely a gangster. He is, we got a lawyer to consult. <laughs> we don't consult. <laughs> we don't consult. <laughs> <laughs> don't leave me any <laughs> Oh, go on, crack on. This is brilliant. All right, go so, on. Oh. I invest in beachfront po property in Puerto yeah. Piasco, Rocky Point. Tijuana Airport is quite close to that. Then you can fly over to the other side of Mexico, Mexico City. Air France to Paris, yeah. jump on a train, because it's a red flag, isn't it, if you're getting a plane out of the hole. <laughs> yeah. Plane from fucking Air France yeah, back, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And that's what we did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the biggest shipment we had was about 40k, which was in computer towers. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah. Good. And, and, and um, so, so how did you import them from, from, from place to place? Like, all right, so, 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 all right, right so um, we sent out test kits from a website called Dance Safe. Yeah. My, my smugglers, because I couldn't go. Test kits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> test the pills. He's on it, on it. An XC pill should be 100, 125 milligrams of MDMA and clay. Usually a beige press. Like a Mitsubishi. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the testing kit turns it like this purple blue colour. So we know we got good stuff. And we had a reputation for good stuff. And it was all going good until Sammy the Bulls crew moved into the scene. <laughs> Yeah. I think he should take up, I think Boris should move over and he should take up doing with the coronavirus. I think he'll do the testing and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll you land it all right. <laughs> what's, going, what's going to the magic? I brought some other paperwork. I've got to see some of this. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Let me see where the fuck it is. Because people say, like, um, my story's fucking oh, mate. Well, I'm hard to believe. Is it? Some people say this. <laughs> <laughs> and what's this paperwork from? Is this your All right. litigation? The lawyer, the lawyer said, my lawyer, yeah, who was recommended right. by the New Mexico Mafia, he said, there's so much paperwork on your case, it would fill whole buildings. Yeah, yeah. We have to bring a computer and you can just look at it in the visitation room on a computer. Right. That's six pages of what fills buildings. <laughs> Right there, yeah. And what's in the six pages? Well, let, let's just let, let's leave. Just have, have a browse over that while we continue the story. Okay, and he could, he could confirm there's some pretty heavy stuff in there in a minute. Okay. All right, so everything's going very smoothly until all of a sudden there was this, these like steroid head jock ecstasy peddlers just appeared in the clubs wearing these polyester shirts and um, <laughs> leopard print. And we figured, who the fuck are these guys stepping on our toes? <laughs> now, at the peak of it, I'd, yeah, married, yeah. I'd married a woman. She was a clever woman. She's are you married now? I was married three times in America. No, really? So, the, at the peak of it, the third wife... Stop. Yeah. What about the first and second? There's two... We haven't got time. Party time! Is that good or bad? <laughs> it's all in this book, party time, the three marriages. Hey! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you don't think I'm in. Not me. I'm not in it. I'm not in it. I'm not in it. Stay safe, folks. <laughs> after this. The only man I know who can bring a jury box. At least I've got that on my hand. Bring a jury box which says invisible. And the only reason it says invisible on this is you don't actually use one. <laughs> <laughs> so, go on. Sorry. All right. Okay. So, I'm married to a woman. She's yeah. a clever woman. She's a university oh, no, graduate. Okay. Well, I want to get a balancing out. She was doing lesbian <laughs> internet porn when I met her. And she was it. So one of her lovers, a female lovers, was <laughs> dating. He's not my kind of bad, is he? He's one just of, not my kind of bad. He ain't easy. One, oh, of, her, one of her female lovers. Oh, I love <laughs> <laughs> Crash out your father. He's hilarious. Oh, blinder. But please, please, don't his charge check on me. I've done his charge check, <laughs> and he's guilty as Charles. I've got to tell you, he's guilty as. No, I've been there. I've been there. No, um, I did notice that when the guys got stopped, they had their handguns and the amount of drugs that was in the car and the special agents and stuff like that. So, yeah, it does collaborate your story, so I must say. Yeah, we've had to tone it down for legal reasons. Yeah. As you can see on that, there's other things involved that yeah. I can't get into. Absolutely. Um, so my wife at this point, she's got a bisexual relationship with a lover of one of these new dealers. So she sets up a meet, they're like, these guys want to meet you. All I know is they're selling these coloured pills and I've got this good reputation. So we meet at this place in Tucson called Heart Five, this bar. 
Now, like I said, you know, I'm just a nerd. These guys have heard about this guy, English Sean and English Peter. Wild Man's not with me. I take one of my bodyguards, he's a bouncer called, um, what should we call him, Rosetti. R Rosetti, one of the Rosetti brothers. He's strapped. My wife just like takes a load of GHB as we're going in. I do a load of GHB. Because that made me fearless. Yeah. Really? Yeah, GHB made me fearless. Okay. So I thought, right, I've got to act a bit crazy around these guys. They've, you know, they've heard I've got, they've probably got these big, if you've not met someone and you, you're thinking all these things about them, yeah, bigger yeah, than yeah. it really is. So I can play on yeah. that. I'll do a Jedi mind trick on them. So you was playing the part, mate. Playing the part, yeah. And, and do you yeah. think you was able to do that from watching all the films and, and being so interested in gangsters and stuff like that? I was just fucking winging it, man. <laughs> <laughs> the drugs. The drugs was telling me. You can do this. You're the man. You can do this. So, so I'm going to demonstrate, right? I'm going to demonstrate. There's, 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 there's two guys. One's, the Sp one's called the Spaniard. Oh, blind. One, one's called the Spaniard. He's, 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 he's well built, but the other guy's like six and a half fucking foot. So they take me through to this VIP area. Yeah, no, I'm, not. I, I'm fucking walking through to this VIP area. They don't know my, I've got this guy strapped with me. He's watching me from a fucking safe distance, waiting for me to give them nod. Because I said to him, if they try and kidnap me through a back door, just open up on the motherfuckers. Uh, my wife's chilling in the fucking, in the main bar, like fucking half fucking unconscious on there. She's done so much yeah, fucking yeah, GHP. Yeah, yeah. And um. The big guy just goes everyone out. <laughs> so everyone clears out of this fucking room, right? <laughs> they sit down and they leave a space in the middle. Yeah. Let me demonstrate, let me demonstrate. <laughs> now, my grandfather Fred, yeah. I, I'm just thinking I've got to do something crazy. And this is a so spur of the moment. Yeah. I just remembered my grandfather Fred, whenever I was on the sofa, yeah. he would always grab my knee here and make okay. me jump. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I fucking, I'm just like this, I just sit down, grab bro over the knees. Well, like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know you can do now! <laughs> <laughs> what did they do? They're looking at me and have my eyes no. are yeah. Crystal meth and GSP. No. Yeah, yeah. So they think this guy's fucking nuts. Sean, let me ask Even though I didn't lock much, they must have thought I was nuts. Sean, let me ask you. Yeah, yeah. go for it. I've noticed through the story, <gasps> you keep, uh, you've said it quite numerous of times yeah. uh, about being kidnapped. Was kidnapping always a worry for you? Was kidnapping always a worry for you? The people always used to get kidnapped in the game or so. Or had you, you know, you well, said it numerous times. I was worried about me. I told him to come in twenty minutes after if I'm not out. Kick off the door in case I get kidnapped. So was that always a concern with you being kidnapped? Yeah, and that lifestyle. Okay. Kidnappings, door kickings, in guns. Arizona, and, everyone's and, got guns, man. And, crazy. All these, and all these falls are really because of drugs. It's because you're on the gear, because you just said to Lee, Lee just asked you, yeah. did you want to skate with me? You said, nah, I was just hired the car here. Yeah. So it was all down to drugs. So, yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah. You, you, you've got this far now. Yeah. Um, so when, when, like, you know, I was sort of, when did you, your first prison? When did you. All when, right, when well, did let me just do what was next. Yeah. So, they say, why don't I buy pills off them? I say, I've got a good rep. Yeah. Then they say, F well, I, I disrespect the pills. I said, no, 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 call it, call it pills. And then the big guy jumps up and goes, one call to Sammy the Ball. Don't you know who you want call? <laughs> one call to Sammy the Ball. We can have a two minutes in the center. Sammy the Ball. Yeah, this is the first I know. <laughs> this is the first I know. Yeah, yeah. Wait, who is Sammy the Ball? Who's <laughs> Sammy the Ball? Who is he? 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 Well, I'd seen him on the news. Yeah, John, no, he's been on the news. All right, so Sammy the Ball at that point in time was the highest ranking member. The Gambino family on the bus murdered almost two dozen people. Highest ranking member of the. Mafia to turn Bang. witness informant, and he was doing an XC ring out of witness protection. Yeah, in Tempe, Arizona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what am I? So I'm wondering how long the piece is going to last. My top sales guy is a guy called Skinner. <laughs> Paul Associates, let's say, entice Skinner to a nightclub in Scottsdale under the pretext of buying drugs off him, knock his teeth out, take his shit. And then I move into like a million dollar house on the side of the mountain in Tucson, Arizona, where you can't even get up the fucking street without a guard on the end of the street. Because yeah. I'm thinking, oh, maybe they're going to come for me now. I had a, out of the 200 people working for me, I had a head of each faction. So it was about 20 heads of each factions. We had a crime family dinner every month. Okay. And I knew that was my shield. Yeah. If any of those heads of those factions, that was my shield getting pierced when they knocked okay. his teeth out. Right. So I relocated from Phoenix, Arizona to this house on the mountain where you couldn't go. You couldn't access it. So Sean, Fish has just gone off for a little break, so I thought I'd have my chance to have a little chat with you and just find out more about you and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so how long 
what viewers might need to know, because obviously about the drugs, obviously drugs are not good, we've, we've done them in our lives and stuff like that, but how long have you been clean and how did you get clean? And SWAT team cleaned me up, that was it. Yeah? That was the fucking wake up call I needed. Yeah? Yeah. So you've never been tempted to go back to drugs? Or... Seeing the horror of what drug use led to in the jail, 90% shooting up heroin, crystal meth, you yeah. know, the skin, teeth rotting out, I was like, do I want to end up going down that road? I thought, mm. fuck it, man. I was ashamed to put people on that oh. road. I thought I'm going to tell my story and help people oh, with my yeah. yeah. And, and, and for the viewers out there, how did you manage to cope mentally with prison? You know, with, with, with the anxiety of getting 200 years. I mean, 200 years is a, longer than a lifetime, mate, you know? So, so, how did you deal with that? In my second year, I was in the Maximum Security of Madison Street Jail. They'd fucking took me away from Wildman and all my co-defendants to break me down psychologically. Yeah. They said we were influencing the co-defendants as well. They charged my bird with prescription pill found on the day of the SWAT team raid because they didn't have a written prescription next to it, which is classics family to stop her from visiting me. Yeah. It's okay. almost 50 degree heat. I've got bleeding skin infections and bed sores all over my body because we're in like a concrete oven. There's no air coming in. I've got all you fucking pink eye infections. There's like yellow pus coming out of my eyelids down here, yellow pus. God. I'm thinking, and then there's cockroaches all over us at night as well. I'm thinking, 200 years like this, I'm just going to fucking slash my wrist and bleed out. That's what I was going to say about so the suicidal thoughts. So I planned, I planned to kill myself after the guard did the security walk. But before I was going to do it, I wanted to say goodbye to my family and friends. And what I mean by that was I was allowed seven photos. Yeah. So I get the pictures out of my mum, dad, girlfriend, sister. And I go, I'm looking at the picture of my mum. I'm thinking my mum was going to get a call saying, your son's just killed himself in a foreign prison. Yeah. And I couldn't bear the thought, I, put, I started crying at that yeah. point. I couldn't bear the thought, I put my mum through that, and that's what stopped me from killing myself, yeah. So you had to go on that journey, and you had to yeah. get headstrong, and you had to uh, focus your mind on getting through it, I suppose. Yeah. Right? And yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not being funny, I mean, I've been to prison, I've done a lot of years in prison, but I, even I would be scared going over to American prison with all the horror stories you hear about sexual stuff going totally. on and stuff like that, you know? You have to go to a rape class to get taught on not to get raped. <laughs> really? American prison. Wow. Yeah, you, you watch a video and, and they show you some predators in the day room and the young people come in and if they take food from the predators, hmm. then they're in debt. So the next day they say, look, well, you got to pay for that or else we're going to fucking stab you up. <laughs> was, there, was there men dressed as women in there and stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, we've got the backdrop for it. The, the great tranny one. Oh, yeah. I mean, Sean, I'm down here. <laughs> Remember, remember, in the house. remember when I said to you when I'd done the great tranny robbery, <laughs> remember I told you I thought I looked like Naomi Campbell? <laughs> 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 You know, I mean, I got past security. <laughs> they said gunman trips over the low hills and drops gun. <laughs> well, well, we've done it all. We've had the podcast. These are hills of his. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to London's craziest gangster. I'm real London gangster. We're sure that was the man, the king of podcasts. We've had a laugh. We've had a joke. Part one, part two. Remember to like and subscribe. Hit the button, smash the button, whack the button. Whatever you do, don't miss the button. Right, have a look at him. He really keeps on though. See you soon. Back. Brad. How's your father? Oh, God. <laughs> Big C made a bangle. Oh, it's that pain relief. Long time I've been searching for some remedies. Never thought I'd find a cure in all these melodies. I never thought I'd put my people in the cemeteries. I've looked my brethren in the eyes and they pretend to me. Some people act real but fakes what they tend to be. I read messages, even ones that ain't sent to me. But it's all God's plan today was meant for me. I tell my friends that I am with you till the match is over. Now little Neeks on the internet.